Hey, my name is Ryan, and we are so thankful you're here and, and glad that you could join us tonight. Uh, it, is, it is my distinct honor uh, to introduce to you our, our dramatic duo as part of Stage Righteous and the, the ministry that they have been so, such a blessing to us to be able to share with us a handful of times this past year. And uh, they are presenting to us Celebrate the Child. And so we are um, just encouraged by what they have to offer. Uh, a few things, if I could remind you. Um, obviously, if you need to, to slip out or use the rest for something, please uh, please don't do that in here. Uh, but <laughs> as, as you do that, try to keep that to a minimum if you can. We want to try and keep the doors closed as best we can. Um, if, uh, if, if we have our young ones, I have a tiny one. If, if they get a little bit out of hand, if you don't mind just sort of slipping them out, because that makes it a little hard for the guys. Um, if you have a cell phone and can turn it to vibrate or off or something like that, that would be really helpful uh, to them. That's most of what I can think to tell you, but again, uh, please enjoy this evening, and, and so I'll, I'll hand it over to Dean. Thank you. Join me, if you will, and let's go back a few thousand years. Before electricity, before running water, before all the things we take for granted these days. There's no cell phones. No televisions, no radio, no internet. The Bible hadn't even been printed yet. And into this world, a child would be born. It would change this world we live in and our, our relationship with our Creator forever. <coughs> you can imagine that we lived in a village back in that time. And we got these new neighbors. They were foreigners. They, they came in right after the census. Okay. Of course, the story came in long before they did. And all you women, you were gossiping. I mean, this girl, she was way too young to have this baby. They got to town, and Mary was strong, and the women didn't understand that. They thought that she was arrogant and cocky in her confidence in God, I guess. And, Mary didn't seem to be bothered by it, even when she stumbled upon the crowd before you guys could stop. We gossip. <laughs> and us guys, well, you know, we, we kind of talked over the back fence, too. You know, this guy, Joe, we didn't quite understand him, you know. So he's a great guy, I and mean, he'd help any of us. We'd all contest to that, right? And then he'd step up and help us out any time we needed it. But uh, the rumor is that uh, you know, he married that girl to keep it from getting stoned. Uh, it wasn't even his baby. I think that he may have been persuaded slightly by an angel to do that. So here they are. They're our neighbors now, right? They're here in town. they got this little carpet muncher crawling around in the backyard there. And then as if that wasn't enough, this caravan shows up. All this traffic, these foreigners, people we've never even seen before coming to town. It was crazy. I mean, and we thought the neighbor's dog was bad, right? <laughs> Camels, and it was just, it was nuts. And these guys that we now refer to as the wise men came to see this neighbor's baby. They came to celebrate the child. So tonight we're going to share with you a few of those people that may have been touched by this birth back in those days. So why don't you join us as we celebrate the child?
Hey, you want a room? Yeah, I got rooms. Count them. Ten empty rooms. Yeah. Twenty-five bucks a night. Five bucks for a key deposit and yeah, another five bucks if you want sheets. Hey, you want a room? Close the door, you're letting all the flies out. <laughs> oh, you think that's expensive? Hey, you should have been here five months ago when we had the census. <laughs> all those stupid Romans and the stupid census. But let me tell you, we can jack up our rates without fear. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Hey, the company shops, hey, they were selling sandwiches for eight bucks a piece. <laughs> for a ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, it put me in the black for three months straight. I wish they had it. Since the seventh month, that would be time. Move to the Riviera. <laughs> great. Yeah. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Hey, nobody comes to Bethlehem unless somebody makes them. Stupid Romans. As it is, I'm looking through my wife's chain first to find enough money for a baby for lunch. A hundred bucks a night. Uh, that's what I got for a room. Uh, I had ten families sleeping up front here at 20 bucks a head. <laughs> yeah. And this one couple. Yeah. We got this shed out back where we keep the garbage in this old cow my wife got to trade. <laughs> this couple, hey, they spent five nights back there. <laughs> yeah. They were a couple of country bumpkins, let me tell you. Hey, they probably thought it was a honeymoon suite. <laughs> yeah. You know, I charged him 75 bucks a night, which is pretty good considering it was private, except for the cat. The, uh, yeah. But, uh, they were having problems, so I thought, hey, why not cut him a deal? Put a star on the crown, that whole schmear. Oh, they were having problems. They were having female problems. And she was having female problems. She's going to have a baby. Hey, how am I supposed to know she's going to be there with the baby out in the shed, huh? Hey, you think it's easy running the motel? Hey, it's dog eat dog out here. Yeah. What? <laughs> Get out of here. Like, hey, Rachel. Rachel, come here. Hey, you remember that couple? Hey, they spent the nights out in the shed during the census? <laughs> yeah, the one with the kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, word on the street is, that kid's the Messiah. <laughs> hey, buddy. If that kid's the Messiah, my name's Caesar. <laughs> if that kid's the Messiah, I'd have given him the room for free. Because <laughs> then I could advertise. The Messiah slept here. <laughs> sure beats a mint on your pillow, let me tell you that, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me tell you, if I put a sign like that over this dump, who's going to believe that?
care to join me? Come on, come on. Sit, 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 sit. Don't look familiar. Perhaps you know me, eh? <laughs> Eli, the king. No. I'm famous. Uh, I kept the songs at the synagogue. I, I sing the songs. <laughs> yes. I, I am the most famous cantor in the village. Uh, yes, Beth, Beth Lanier. Yes, uh, 
It was crazy in Bethlehem. I, was, something very strange happened in Bethlehem. I, we were in the hotel. We, we got to the room, and, 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 and in the middle of the night, when it finally got quiet, it, uh, the, uh, in our room, and we were in our beds, and we made a pallet on the floor for, 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 the, for the boy. And, uh, so in, in the middle of the night, you, you know, what old men do in the middle of the night, I got up to do what old men do, and oh, the boy, he was, he was gone. I worry about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I go to wake up my wife, who's sleeping. And, um, before I woke up my wife, I hear singing. Beautiful scene. I couldn't help it. I went outdoors and I followed the singing and around back to behind the hotel. The garbage everywhere. To this old shed, shack. It was full of garbage and there was this burlap sack hanging for the door. And just behind it, you could see the faintest light coming through. I pulled back the burlap and I, I saw a cow and this very frightened peasant boy and his exhausted and sweaty wife who had apparently just given birth to this baby. But there, in the shadows, in the corner, was my boy. Seen like an angel. Son of David, come, come to set us free. Come to all the children's hearts. Chosen one, come choose me. And then, he sang what I had never taught him. Choose me now to sing in your palace, King. Choose me now to honor you. Chosen one, come choose me. You know, the prophets say old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. As, as for me, for, for this old man, I believe there will yet be visions. Shoot, 
fire. My wife says I can't tell a story worth a flip. <laughs> I always get the front and the back or the back and the front. And uh, Anyway, let me see if I can get this right. All right. I was 10 years old, okay? And I was a prince, this old boy named Joe, what lived up on the hill, all right? And I, uh, my mom figured out pretty quick I wasn't gonna be no scholar, <laughs> yeah. So she brings me this new guy in town so I could earn, a, earn an honest living. And so what I'm trying to get to is, is telling me a little bit about the place though. It was up on, is it a house up on this rise, you see? And it had a shed out back because he worked with wood and stuff. And then right between the shed and the house, there was this big old oak tree. Had lots of shade underneath it. And when it was hot outside, Joe would be working out underneath the shade. And he was married, married to a woman named Mary. And they had a little sniveler, a little sniveler named uh, Jesus, but everyone called him Josh. And he was a, he was a, I don't know, one or two. He was a little ankle biter, you know? <laughs> And anyway, he had these two wooden spoons, a uh, chill card, I guess, and he'd just play with the dirt with them. And, and she'd sit in a ladder back chair, and she'd be talking to Joe, and Joe'd be shooting the breeze with her. And me, I'm just running around holding up the end of a board, or, or running errands, or going every which way, doing whatever Joe told me to. Well, get into the day I was telling you about. That day, Joe asked me to run in town, run this school that he just finished to this old fellow who lived on the other side of the, the city from him. So I did what he asked. I got the stool, ran over there, put it in there. And it was getting about lunchtime. So I thought, hey, why not stop at Mama's and get some lunch? <laughs> She'd be my favorite. It was pita and hummus. <laughs> mm. No one makes it like my mama, not even my wife, but don't tell it. <laughs> anyway, so I was eating lunch and then I finished and I guess I was lollygagging around too long because my mama said, boy, you better get back on up to Joe's, you're going to get a whooping. So I hightailed it out of there and I started running up there and up on the rise I could see Joe with his arm around Mary and he weren't working. He was just sitting there looking at Josh and there were three neighbors with him. So I was working on my apologizing speech and, and when I got up there, I looked Joe right in the eye because mama always said, if you're going you look him right in the eye. So that's what I did. I looked him right in the eye and I started apologizing and I got about three sentences in and I realized he weren't looking me at all. He was looking at Josh there in the dirt. I looked at Josh and I didn't see nothing and I looked at the neighbors and they weren't neighbors. They are strangers. So I looked at them and that's when I saw that fella I was telling you about. He was, he stood up and he was like 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and like 250 pounds. And he looked mean. And I looked up at him and he looked down at me. And I said, the first thing that came to my mind, I said, Mister, are you God? And are you going to kill me? And he looked down at me and he didn't say nothing. So I figured he is. And he is. But then, it's like the sun came out from behind the clouds. He got this big old grin, and with one hand, he reached down, scooped me up, and picked me up, and said, oh, real fancy life, boy, I am not God, and I will not harm a hair on your head. <laughs> yeah, he smelled good, like Old Spice. <laughs> So then he turned me to Josh and he pointed and said, there is your guy. And I, I, I started laughing because, you know, this must have been one of them grown up jokes and I laughed to make sure that they knew that I was, I was in on it. But no one else was laughing. And I looked down and it's just Josh playing in the dirt with his spoons. I looked back and it was like the sun went behind the clouds again. And he wasn't serious. It was like he was scared. I looked at Josh because I thought maybe maybe a big old spider or a snake or a scorpion was going to get Josh. But there's nothing like that. I looked back at him and he was so scared. A fellow as big as that. All those muscles and everything. And there's nothing he could do about it. 
he set me down like he plumb forgot why he picked me up. And he said something under his breath. He said, yep, that there's God. Then his buddy stood up, and they all went over to Mary, and they just dropped something right, dropped boxes right in front of her. And then they turned and walked off without Mary another word. It was the craziest thing I ever see. They just walked off down the road. Never said nothing else. I turned and looked, and Josh, he was just sitting there, laying in the dirt, with them wooden spoons. Yeah. 
I might stay now. I gotta go bury my boy.
take about five minutes. <laughs> and I'll teach you how to love your mom. And I'll teach you how to love your daddy. I've got to stop gushing here. I'm going to start crying. Your mom is going to wear me out for having you outside here in the cold as it is. I love you, Yeshua. All right. Let's get you inside. Maybe mommy wants want to sing you a lullaby.
join me in saying thank you to the guys for what they offered us tonight.
you all glory and honor tonight. We praise your name tonight. And we thank you, not only for this season, not only for Christmas Day, not only for Advent, but for your presence among us now. Lord, help us to be the light in this world. Help us to share and spread our light, your light, to all who will hear, all who will listen, that the world might come to know you and give glory to you, now and forevermore. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being here tonight. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.
Christmas on.